Now we got bad blood. You know, it used to be mad love, so take a look at what they've done. I, Chris Wolf here, the best seven vlogger who always tells it like it is. There have been only three bad blood pay-per-views in WWE history, starting in 1997, exactly 27 years ago today, when it had two D's in bad, and it was an in-your-house subtitle. Then during the first brand split, Bad Blood became Raw's June pay-per-view for two years. Now it's back after 20 years of dormancy, and not much has changed. Because like other Bad Bloods and the previous October pay-per-views, this year has Hell in a Cell match attached. Unfortunately, it seems that they are again hoping for quality over quantity in this PLE, and they have to hurry because the UFC matches later on. They've been successful so far, but I don't know. Two women's title matches, one primary champion, a tag title with a rival against the hated bloodline, a singles match between the former and current leaders of the Judgment Day, and a Hell in a Cell match which has zero title aspirations attached. It's just there to end a feud and may not even be the main event this time. Well, I guess we have to wait and see if this is the night the lights go out in Atlanta from the AC in the State Farm Arena at full blast even in October. Here are my predictions for Bad Blood 24. Start with Damian Priest versus Finn Balor. You know, I saw this coming almost as soon as Priest cashed in at WrestleMania to become the third World Heavyweight Champion. Whenever a part of a faction wins a solo title, the others get jealous. Happened with Randy Orton in Evolution, and it's happening now. But this is still at least three on one because damn sure Carlito and JD McDonough will be at ringside. Priest may be able to fight back for a time, but the Judgment Day has more or less stopped caring about winning, but are focused on destruction. Not that Balor won't sneak in a pin before the slaughter, though. Winner is Finn Balor. Hell in a Cell match. See it. Philip Brooks versus Drew McIntyre. I prayed this feud was over after McIntyre got bashed in Berlin, but nope. Mac had to tear off the bracelet and destroy it like he should have done months ago. Now they're in the steel cage on steroids, and while they're supposed to be locked in with no escape, <laughs> escape has happened far too many times for it to be a gimme. Not saying Brooks will pull a Shane O'Mac and dive bomb off the cage onto McIntyre, but there's no keeping them from not doing it. In either case, this feud has got to end here. Brooks will win in a bloody battle and will seek to take on either Gunther or maybe even Jey Uso for a much needed title. And Mac? Winner is Philip Brooks. WWE Women's Championship. Nia Jax defends against Bayley. Let's face it, folks, Bailey is not too far from either retiring or moving on to AEW or the like. Having control over damage control was the only thing that helped her rise back to fame. Now, with that faction down to just the Sky Pirates and on Raw, Bailey is left alone on SmackDown and facing the unstoppable force and her suck up. I would love to have Bailey win at least one more title before her departure, one way or another, but. If it's going to happen, it will not be against Jax. Winner and still champ Nia Jax. And then, Tiffany Stratton will finally grow some balls, whack Jax with the briefcase, cash in money in the bank, and stop the unstoppable force. Winner and new champ, Tiffany Stratton. Women's World Championship, Liv Morgan versus Ray Ripley with Dirty Dominic Mysterio hung from a shark cage high above. Yeah, 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 we all know where this is going, right? The shark cage is supposed to prevent someone from interfering in a match like they always do. And most times it was a manager like Paul Heyman, but they always find a way to sneak something into the cage to help out their buddy below. Hell, last time I saw a match like that, Cruiserweight Enzo Amore oiled up his body to slip between the bars to help Big Cass. 
Doubtful that Dum Dum will be doing that, but brass knucks or the like aren't out of the question. Rhea may beat Morgan from pillar to post, but Morgan will get the last laugh. Winner and still champ, Liv Morgan. Finally, tag team main event. WWE Champion Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns versus Sola Sokoa and Jacob Fatu of the Bloodline. There has been a lot of speculation as to whether or not Rhodes or Reigns will get along. Rhodes and Reigns. In the last column I did, I said they would. Tentatively. Perhaps this battle will convince Reigns to take back the Tribal Chief title at War Games before pursuing the title he lost. But of course, if things get too rough, the Tonga Boys will be there to take care of the current and former champ. And unless Jimmy Uso and or Brock Lesnar return to even the odds, it will be a tough battle. But Rhodes has been dealing with the bloodline for nearly two years now. And despite Reigns not having competed in six months, he can still spear with the best of them. Whether they win or lose, the ceasefire between the American Nightmare and the original Tribal Chief will end once that last bell rings. I think it's best that they win together. Winners are Rhodes and Reigns. Those are my picks. The WWE got problems, and they better frickin' solve them before AEW makes a really deep cut in their ratings. I'm Chris Wolf of the Wrestling Vlog, who always tells it like it is. Pray for peace. And I'll see ya!